Hey friends, it's Michael Goldsman here. People often ask me, very specifically and directly, how the clearing work that I facilitate can specifically benefit them in their challenge or their situation that they're going through. And I wanted to create this video to put it directly on my website so I could answer that type of question in a specific and yet broad way that may be applicable to you in your situation. So wherever you're at on life's journey now, you may be having some challenges, some things that you might consider problems or issues that you would like to resolve or solve or even completely get rid of. These could be issues of health. These could be issues around your mind and your emotions, having tr challenges or trouble accessing uh, more peace and more joy and more love in your own being on a daily basis. These could be relationship challenges. These could be financial challenges wanting to, or other challenges of manifestation desiring to manifest more in the physical world, challenges around your career, around your purpose, around moving forward with uh, identifying and being able to take action on what you know is encoded into your heart for this earthly journey. Why don't you take a deep breath around any of these concerns and challenges right now and enter into this kind of dialogue conversation with me right now because this conversation that I'm having with you is exactly what I would have with a, an initial client, a person coming to me, emailing me, contacting me around doing clearing work. And I want to set the stage for what this clearing work is, what it does, and what exactly problems or challenges mean, no matter how they're manifesting in your life right now. You know, from our, what I call five sense reality, from what we can see, what we can feel with our physical senses and see literally in front of us, there are many problems and challenges that we may be facing on a daily basis. And trying to solve those challenges and problems on the level of simply the physical only sometimes feels very limiting for us. And sometimes the solutions and challenges cannot be found on the level of only the physical. Sometimes health issues that we're having, we can find some relief through simply taking physical medicines, for instance, our doctor would prescribe. But there are these other things that are considered incurable or considered to be, we don't really know what the condition is. Um, how do we approach that? Or things that are not as physical based, things that are in your perception, in your mind, in your emotions, in just the way that you feel on a daily basis. How do we approach that? You probably wouldn't be watching this video unless you had some sort of spiritual connection orientation. So I want to broaden our horizon perspective, and this conversation comes through me being a facilitator for many tens of thousands of clearings over the course of many years. What I'm gonna to say to you now may not seem new. It may not seem significant if you just sort of listen with a surface level consciousness to it. But I want you to deepen and take a deep breath and relax and really hear what I'm about to say to you. This is my knowing that I'm about to share with you, not simply just a, an opinion or not a thought, and I'm not really speaking for any particular belief system or tradition right now. This is simply based on my own inner knowing and experience working with myself, my own healing path, and working with many clients. The first thing I wanna share with you is that you are not broken in any way. You may be experiencing symptoms and challenges this does not mean that there is something fundamentally wrong with you. The first assumption, the first knowingness that I have in approaching healing, clearing work in my own life and that of my clients is that there may be problems and challenges on the level of our experience. Okay, so we have an ache or a pain or we have a challenge with manifesting something no matter how much we're trying to do that. That's a problem or challenge on the level of our experience. However, if we continue to take steps back away from the problem, take steps back within ourselves to the place where our consciousness is one with spirit or one with God or one with source, whatever term you want to use for that, where we are one in consciousness with our creator. When we take steps back to viewing the problem or challenge from that level or seeing it from that perspective, or feeling our life through the lens of God's own consciousness. 
when we do that, we start to realize, oh, I don't really have any problems. There's simply a misalignment of consciousness here. There's simply stuff that's accumulated within the lens of my own consciousness, which may have accumulated either in the past or in the very distant past in our soul's history. And it's blinding us to being able to see the truth of our situation now. And more importantly, seeing the truth of who we are in relation to spirit and in relation to our, our problem or challenge. If we could just see with the perspective of God, the perspective of the divine, see with that level of clarity, that level of bliss, that level of unconditional love, that level of deep inner knowingness and connection, we would begin to see, oh, this is the solution. Or the problem sometimes would vanish on its own. Or we would sometimes be easily guided to certain action steps that we didn't know were available prior to this time. So what I'm trying to say to you is that our journey of healing around any particular issue, problem, challenge that we have is really a journey of consciousness. Yes, there are things that we need to do in the physical world. There may be things and action steps we need to take in the physical world. And healing applications and modalities uh, for various practitioners, supplements, doctors. I'm not trying to deny the, the value of any of these things. But ultimately, and this is where I come into the equation in my work, is that the alignment, the clarity, the connection of our own consciousness to our source, and that source is within us. It's not some on some distant cloud somewhere in a place called heaven. The consciousness, the source, is within us. It's imprinted in our own being. We have lost the sense of our oneness with that connection because of something that I refer to in my work as spiritual programs. This is another way of saying subconscious accumulation that is winding around in our minds continuously. It could be coming from many years or in my work, even many, many lifetimes of our soul's history. This is also referred to as karma. In the Christian tradition where I come from, it's also referred to as sin. This energy is not a punishment. I want to say that to you very, very clearly. This is not sent to you by some external being who's saying, well, you know, Michael here, he just hasn't really done a good job. He's been thinking that he was separate from spirit all this time, thinking he was limited. So we're just going to punish him with, you know, lack and limitation or lack of success or, or whatever the other problems or challenges we, we have. It's not a punishment, but what karma is, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it occurs to us through our own lack of right seeing and perception about who we are. We attach ourselves to limited identifications uh, in our own being. We often do this very subconsciously. We judge ourselves. We judge the circumstances. We, we go into victim consciousness sometimes, thinking, why is this happening to me? And as this accumulates, this isn't just you might be doing this right now, or you might be doing this in the last hour. This could be coming in through thousands of lifetimes. Wrong identification, belief that we're a victim, belief that life is happening to us, um, belief that this problem is real and it's being sent to me as a punishment and I must be fundamentally flawed in, error, in, in an error state in order to have attracted this problem, this condition, this uh, relationship challenge, this health condition, or whatever it is. Those beliefs, perceptions, and judgments that we make about ourselves, often subconsciously, end up becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy, limiting us and accumulating over the course of time, beginning to perpetuate themselves. You may have heard the phrase before that, as you think, so shall you be. What this means is that what we have thought in the past becomes part of our database or our programming and will tend to make us, unless we are conscious, unless we interrupt it somehow and clear it, will tend to make us um, represent and continue to promote and recreate the consciousness that we've already known. Psychologists tell us this. They tell us that our thoughts today are 90% or more the exact same thoughts that we had yesterday. This is the way the soul, or the mind, you could say, continues to promote what it already knows. 
So the thing is, if you have lived in a state of a problem or challenge for any period of time, it's very likely that you've also had something related to that or an accumulation of energy that is causing this challenge now coming from possibly hundreds or thousands of your past lives as well. This is not to blame that energy. And it's also not to say, well, there's nothing I can do about it because it's in a past life. This is the power of this particular form of spiritual clearing work that I practice, is that we are able to work with your own higher intelligence to be able to research, go into what we call your soul records, or your Akashic records, or your subconscious mind. This is the stuff that we just don't know is operating, except we do know it's operating because we see the results. The results that we're seeing in our life are the the literal representing in the physical about what we truly believe on the internal. Let me say that again. What we're seeing in our life now in terms of both our successes and our limitations are the results of what we truly believe and think internal to us. It may not be what we think we think right in this moment. We might have just done a hundred affirmations and think, well, I'm, you know, believing that all of life loves and supports me, and I've said that a hundred times, so that's what I believe. That may be a small portion of your consciousness is your conscious mind right now, what you're thinking while you're watching this video. But 99.999% of your consciousness is subconscious. It's something that you don't really always know on the surface except what you see in your results. So really 100% of the time in my experience with tens of thousands of clearings, is that there was always some subconscious and, and or past life reason, often there's millions of reasons, why we're experiencing a certain limitation or problem or challenge in our current situation right now. Now let's come back again what I said earlier in this video. If we could just see our challenges and issues in life and just see our own life through the lens of God, through the lens of spirit, without all our history, without all our programming, without all the things that we believed over and over and over again, I'm not worthy, believe over and over and over again, I deserve to be punished because I think I'm a sinner or something like that. These beliefs that we've accumulated often many, many times throughout our soul's history are preventing us from having the clarity and the openness to see our truth, to see the truth of who you are. As I said earlier, you do not need fixing. Fixing implies that you're somehow broken. Even sometimes the word healing can imply that, oh, you're not whole right now, but you need someone to come in there and fix you and to make you whole again. What I would say, this is my experience again, is that you are already whole, you are already healed, you are not in need of fixing at all. But you might say, well, Michael, there's obviously something that needs to shift here, so how would you describe that? What I would say, is that you need to come into a clearer realization and acceptance of the truth of your being. And one powerful, powerful way of doing that is by clearing your soul records and your subconscious mind of all the limiting programming. When you, as you clear that over the course of time, this isn't all going to happen simply on, in one clearing. This is going to happen a little bit like psychotherapy. This tends to happen best case scenario over the course of time we go back in we do clearings over the course of time and your soul begins continuously to bring up to the surface more and more of that database saying oh i'm ready to release more today a week later oh, i'm ready to release a lot more today and this happens over the course of time what you begin to experience is a state of inner freedom a state of inner knowing a state of inner connection this is the progressive process referred to as enlightenment. Enlightenment doesn't necessarily mean you don't have any problems or challenges. Enlightenment means you see everything from a completely different perspective and you realize at some level there were never any problems and challenges to begin with. The calling something a problem or challenge is in our own perception. It's in our own belief system. And as we change and shift our energy and attitude around the problems through clearing work, and through feeling an increased amount of freedom, an increased amount of availability of our own, the, the, the bliss of our own consciousness. Imagine being able to feel, wow, I feel completely good and healed and loving and connected to my inner being right in this moment. Imagine how much more power you would have 
for solving, taking positive action steps for any challenges or issues you had in your life. Now, the results of this clearing work can be very, very numerous. The first thing I always look for to people and to, to guide them in is look for changes in your own perception. Many people tell me that they feel a sense of relief. They feel a sense of, wow, I feel an availability to more possibility within myself than I ever felt before. I tell people, don't go turning on, uh, opening up all the rocks and uncovering all the rocks around you and looking for, where's my healing? Where's that, where's that manifestation? Where's that guy who said he was going to fix things for me? I'm not saying I'm going to fix things for you. Don't go looking outside yourself for the solution. After you've had a clearing, tune in. I encourage people to do a little bit of meditation, to do a little bit of integration work, to do some spiritual reading, do some contemplation, do some movement, a little bit of walking perhaps, or just some mindful breathing, so that you can get to know what is the change in your own perception that you have had as a result of this clearing. How do you feel differently within yourself? People tell me again, the availability to possibilities. They feel like I didn't have access to the, po the possibilities that I now feel access to in my being before this clearing. And now I feel, wow, my mood has lifted. I've shifted. I feel um, more in alignment with, with the flow of my being. This is what healing is. Healing isn't about twisting the arm of a reluctant deity somewhere in the sky, as many of us have been trained in religion to believe. It's not about some mysterious process of getting God to bless you. You already are a blessing. You already are one and connected to that infinitely healing presence. And without wanting to sound like we should ever blame ourselves, we are the ones, we are the only ones who are standing in the way of our good. This is not meant to say, well, I should blame myself now and get down on myself more because the guy in this video said, I'm the one to blame. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we can take the responsibility to begin to open up at a very deep level and to say, you know what? If something is going to change in my life, something has to change within me. I'm going to let go of all blame, forgive myself for creating this scenario in the first place unconsciously through my past beliefs that holding on to anger and holding on to resentment and not letting go of this situation, this person, all the things that we deal with in clearing sessions. I'm going to let all that go. And I'm going to accept the forgiveness, the beauty, the power, the healing, the wholeness that has already been within me. I just pushed it aside because I didn't know how to receive it in the past. And now I'm open. Now I'm available to my good. You see how that, it does put you in a very powerful position. The good is already there. It's not a mysterious process how to attain it because it's already within you. It's just been covered over by an accumulation of misperceptions, limited judgments, holding on to things from the past. What's nice about this clearing work is that we don't necessarily have to go into excruciating detail about what it is that you're holding on to. Where, where did it start? Um, it's not a matter of going extremely piecemeal to try to figure out one component here and another component here. We're working with your higher intelligence, also maybe known as your higher self or your super conscious mind. This part of you is highly intelligent, knows exactly what you need to have released, and is the major interface that we use in this work to help you just feel this wonderful movement of energy and feel this bliss and feel this openness to possibility. Most people do feel this in one clearing. They feel a shift of energy that is massive within themselves. They feel a release, they feel a clearing, they feel a freedom. And best case scenario, this work is best to do with some degree of regularity over the course of time. I am in a very lucky position to be a facilitator of this work. So I get to work on myself every day. And I have to do that in order to be able to facilitate the clearing from a, a clear place. But most people I work with, I suggest to them to try to do one to two times a month, if that's possible. Any amount you do is good. It could be more than that. It could be less than that. But what will happen over the course of time is after you receive a clearing, your own subconscious, your own higher intelligence will say, you know what? Michael received that clearing today. That wasn't so bad. He didn't, uh, the ego will sometimes fight these clearings and will say, well, we don't want this person to be free of their total database because who would they be without all their stuff? But after we do a big release, 
your own consciousness begins to integrate that and says, you know what? I feel more free. I haven't, I haven't died. That's the ego will always tell us, you're just going to die. You're not going to have any purpose. You're not going to have any motivation unless you have all of this anger and stuff that you're trying to resolve uh, from within you. But after a few days or a few weeks after a clearing, your own consciousness begins to integrate it, begins to feel a greater sense of freedom and lightness and begins to say, wow, I feel better. I feel more capable, more empowered. Let's go even deeper. And what happens is that over time we can begin to clear and resolve our entire database. What does that mean? That means resolving our karma. This is the most powerful technology I've ever found for resolving our karma. I'm not a guru. This isn't some ancient esoteric ceremony. This is simply working with a, a modern technology with ancient roots that helps us to be able to access directly into our soul records and to resolve the programming. As we do that, we begin to experience more and more freedom, more peace, more ease, more flow, more lightness, more joy in our day-to-day -day basis. It makes it easier for us to then do our conscious work. I encourage people after a clearing, then work with some affirmations, work, as I said, with conscious breathing, some body integration work like Qigong or like yoga, um, work with spiritual reading and contemplation. Work with connecting with other people in your community. Work with meditation. All of these technologies will become more powerful for you, more potent, and easier for you, for you to use after you've cleared and connected. It's the name of my website. So just to sum up, as I would have this conversation with anyone coming to me, for an initial clearing especially, remember that you are already whole and perfect as you were created. And there's some work to do. The work to do is not about you becoming holy or you becoming better or you becoming good. There really is no better or worse, good or bad in the realm of spirit. The work is about you simply using this technology that I can help facilitate to release the old that we all have and we didn't even realize we were accumulating at the time so that you can begin to come back into your inner state of freedom, your realization of your oneness with spirit now, and you can begin to operate from that space of freedom in your life. And the result of that is that um, life just becomes wonderful. It becomes loving. Uh, you feel wonderful more and more of the time. You begin to manifest more and more positive expressions of money and career and health and relationship and all the problems and challenges that you think you have now, you begin to see, oh, that was somehow created from a misalignment of my own consciousness. As I release the, the root of that, I can release the problem. The problem will sometimes vanish on its own. You'll think, oh, I had a miraculous healing, but remember, it's not really a miracle. It's just simply the truth that is your own being, being allowed to come forward, being allowed to be experienced and expressed by you. That's what all miracles are. It's an instant, I love the definition, a miracle is an instantaneous demonstration of truth. The truth is already there. It's already in you. It's already operating as your life. It's not demonstrating yet because there's a little bit of work to do, get some of this stuff out of the way, then it can begin to demonstrate. So I hope this video has been useful for you. I encourage you to contact me if you've digested a little bit of this video, found it to be useful, have some questions about how this work might apply into your own life around your specific challenge. Remember, we have challenges and problems, but they're really not challenges and problems at the level of spirit. However, there is some clearing work to do. I can give you a little bit more instruction as to the nature of what needs to be cleared. There may not be anything, any one particular root of your problem. It may be just simply an accumulation of a certain style of energy. Oftentimes it comes down to anger, resentment, self-hatred, hatred of life itself, hatred of being here in the physical body. All of these things can accumulate over hundreds of lifetimes. And as they begin to release, it's not really even important what it is. As it begins to release, you feel more effortless ease and flow in the situations that originally felt like Oh, these are problems, these are challenges, these are incurable, nothing I can do. Remember, you are one with spirit. Spirit loves you. Spirit is imprinted deeply in its fullness as the essential nature of your own being. I look forward to connecting with you soon. 
Thanks for watching this video, friends. Peace and blessings.